the idea that uh, we should have a law that says you can have an abortion at any point, no questions asked, even up until the, the moment of birth, I think for most Americans is a, is a, a, a moon wing position. That's just my opinion, and All right. but that's uh, also what the just to be, No, no, you're, 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 absolutely, you're absolutely fair game to, to make it. I'm just wondering how you think that will resonate with women when the, you know, she is called nasty and crazy and a ding-dong and all, and disrespectful uh, between you and the president, what, what has been said about her. I'm just wondering, do you worry how that comes across? And maybe you draw no distinction between a female candidate and a male, and that's fair game, but that this could, could, could hurt you with, with female voters with these type of comments. Fox News host Neil Cavuto, as you saw, was gently trying to make Senator John Kennedy aware of the fact that the imbecilic attack that he was trying to lob at Kamala Harris was only going to hurt Republicans more because GOP fear mongering about abortion is not an election winner for them. Whenever they talk about abortion, they lose votes. Nobody believes their lies. And furthermore, calling Harris names is alienating suburban women that they need to win. So in the middle of J.D. Vance's childless cat lady controversy, Cavuto is desperately trying to stop Kennedy from doing more damage. However, as you're going to see, he just doesn't take the hint and proceeds to suggest that Cavuto is actually triggered by his comments and it all goes downhill from there. So let's watch. Well, let me let me say it again. Uh, sh sure. sh the vice president is a candidate for president of the United States. I don't care about her gender. Neil, maybe you do, but I don't. I don't care about her race. I care about her. Then why call her a ding dong? Then and, why call her and, a ding dong? And I'm telling you what the polling shows. I'm telling you what okay. the polling All shows, right. and it does. And I'll be glad to sit down with you, and 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 walk yeah, you through please, the polls. Please, please do, because I, I never that, know when it's constructed to call people names. You know, Senator, I just on the well, left or the right. Well, uh, well, but I'm we'll sorry that I'm sorry if it hurts your feelings, but. But let me say it again. Senator, you keep bringing the, it back to my feelings. My feelings matter little. A little. All I'm telling you is if you think you can gain this November calling people names, um, I, I don't know how far that goes, left or right. But we'll see. It's still early to your point. Your, your feelings seem to me like they matter to you a lot, Neil. And, and I'm trying to be objective here. Let me, let me say it again. The, are, the you polling, really, are you really being objective, Senator? I just think you've think got so. a, a bash a on a name calling at her. If you call that being objective, I don't know. But Senator, I, I do I want to it, thank you for coming. Well, thank you for having me, Neil. I hope you have a better day. Yeah, so do I. Hope you have a better day. We'll have more after this. So as you can see, Neil Cavuto is exasperated because he is trying to fucking help Republicans. But Kennedy isn't taking the hint. He thinks that Cavuto is saying that because he's getting offended on behalf of Harris. But no, he's trying to help you guys win, you idiot. But Kennedy is too stupid to understand the point that Cavuto is trying to make. And I love that he claimed that he was being objective by calling Kamala Harris names. I mean, you're free to call her names. In fact, please continue because that's not helping you. But you're not being objective. And the fact that you think you are by calling her names leads me to believe that you don't actually know what that word means. You calling her a loon is subjective, literally, which is why it's a problem for you. Because when Republicans attack women and call them names, well, they don't agree. So that's why Neil Cavuto was desperately trying to get him to shut the fuck up, but he just didn't want to listen and became more fixated on why Cavuto would dare tell him to not attack Kamala Harris. Love it. Now, Cavuto is right to try to rein in these kinds of attacks because it's already backfired tremendously for Republicans. For example, listen to what Tommy Loren, a fellow Republican, says about Vance's childless cat lady comments. Don't get too comfortable on the Trump side. And I'm sure we're going to talk about this later, but the attacks on her personally, on whatever her past personally may have been, or calling her a childless lady, none of those are going to work, and they're going to make women second-guess their support for what they may have felt for Donald Trump. Bad move. Ooh, there are a lot of strong points in that for Republicans. Mm -hmm. I mean, depending on how much you love Donald Trump and do or don't like his VP pick, some of that was for J.D. Vance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's for, it's for Don't everyone. call women dumb. It just doesn't work on Republican women or 
liberal women. Now, that's not the first time that we've played that clip on this channel, but it's important because it highlights a divide that's emerging among Republicans. There are Republicans who want to win and rein in the party's social conservatism and sexism because, you know, they know that that hurts them. There was the report from Politico about GOP leadership trying to get other Republicans to not use sexist and racist attacks against Kamala Harris and try to fixate on the policy substance if you're going to attack her. So there are Republicans that want to win. And then there are other Republicans who maybe want to win, but they are convinced that everyone else thinks just like them. And they want to roll full steam ahead with the ad hominem attacks against Harris. Now, this divide has led to public disputes between conservatives and conservative propagandists. And it's getting to the point where there's so much disagreement over strategy, we might see another mini civil war among Republicans. Here's one example. First of all, theocratic fascist propagandist Matt Walsh attacked Republicans for trying to expand their base, writing on Twitter, quote, Republicans used the national spotlight during the convention to showcase diversity and, quote, big tent tolerance. Dems will use it to paint Republicans as deranged weirdos for four nights straight. Guess which will prove to be a more effective strategy? Hint, not the Republican one. Okay, that's not why Democrats are calling you guys weirdos, but the quartering responded to that, arguing, you need votes to win. Republicans can go back to gatekeeping and being the party of losers after Trump 2024. Deal? Boomer conservative takes like this seem to forget a huge part of MAGA wants nothing to do with the cringe Republicans of yore. Now, Matt Walsh responded by dismissing his argument saying you started paying attention to politics five seconds ago so i don't blame you for not knowing this but chucking conservative positions to the side and moderating in the name of the big tent is the most boomer con thing in the world it's what republicans have been doing forever now the quartering responded to that saying yeah i've only been covering it for years so you covered it for a few more years and thus that means i've covered it for five seconds enjoy gatekeeping and losing matt at least you'll have your principles under president Kamala. Harris. He added, enjoy telling your kids about my principles for the next four years under Kamala. Gatekeeping can be good. I prefer to worry about that after getting Trump into office and not actively telling Trump voters they're not wanted. I've never called myself conservative and this is why. So needless to say, things are getting pretty heated on the right and feelings are getting hurt as people get more salty and you know, if they keep playing these games, things could devolve into a full-blown civil war. But listen, I've got to say this. And I don't want to say it, but I have to admit it. I think that the quartering is making a fairly reasonable point here. The extreme social conservatism of individuals like Matt Walsh, that's just to turn off to regular people. You know, he's expecting the Republican Party to be hyper conservative. And even though the quartering is comparably socially conservative, he acknowledges that most Americans are fairly liberal when it comes to social issues. So Republicans don't really have a fucking choice. If they want to want to win elections, they have to moderate to expand their coalition, especially when it comes to swing states. That's how they get over suburban voters. That's how they went over independence. Now, that's what they kind of tried to do at the RNC. And that pissed off Matt Walsh, right? They brought out Amber Rose to tell people that Republicans aren't actually racist and homophobic. But in reality, they very much still are. But the problem is that Matt Walsh doesn't even want them to pretend to be more welcoming, even if it's for cynical reasons. He wants the Republican Party to be explicitly exclusionary, even if it hurts them in elections. Now, Matt Walsh has been pretty consistent and open about this. For example, in response to exit polling from Ohio showing broad support for abortion, he said he doesn't care what the polls say. Republicans should never stop being anti-abortion. So, you know, this commitment to ideology over winning has put him at odds with people like the quarter who'd prefer to be more pragmatic in order to win elections. Now, that's just one example of how this disagreement has kind of spilled over into the public sphere when it comes to strategy. There's some Republicans who just don't agree with the things that J.D. Vance says, and they find the recommendations that he makes a huge turnoff. For example, this clip from J.D. Vance managed to rub one very popular Republican the wrong way. We need to reward the things that we think are good and punish the things that we think are bad. So you talk about tax policy. Let's tax the things that are bad and not tax the things that are good. If you're making $100,000, $400,000 a year, and you've got three kids, you should pay a different lower tax rate than if you're making the same amount of money and you don't have any kids. It's that simple. I you know, totally agree. We, we, now, to be fair, he's previously endorsed the child tax credit, which is something that I also support. But I doubt that he would actually vote for it if it came up for a vote in the Senate, because when it did come up for a vote to make it permanent, 
all Republicans voted against it. Democrats supported it. With that being said, he might be signaling support for that in this clip, although I don't know. But the way that he frames it is absolutely terrible. It's not about punishing people who don't have kids. It's about not punishing people who do have kids. People who want to have kids should be able to afford daycare and rent, right? They shouldn't be impoverished because they chose to have children. They shouldn't automatically be subjected to, you know, perpetual poverty because they chose to reproduce. I think that's wrong, right? I think most people acknowledge that that's wrong. As a society, we have a collective responsibility to those kids, even if we don't have kids ourselves. I mean, that's why property taxes fund local schools, regardless if you have kids or not. But the problem is that Vance has already made it known that he genuinely has contempt for people who don't have kids, and he thinks that their lives are literally less meaningful than people who do have kids. He's even suggested that people who have kids should get more voting power. So so when you have that additional context, it's easy to see why somebody like Dave Portnoy, for example, who doesn't have kids, would be turned off by that comment. So he tweets out, this is fucking idiotic. You want me to pay more taxes to take care of other people's kids? We sure this dude is a Republican? Sounds like a moron. If you can't afford a big family, don't have a ton of kids. Now, in response, he got swarmed by conservatives like Joel Berry of the Babylon Bee, who replied saying, other people's kids will be the ones feeding you and changing your diaper when you're a childless idiot eight-year-old dying alone in a nursing home. He also quote tweeted Portnoy and added, you're a 47-year-old man child with no kids who has abusive fetishist sex with girls barely out of high school. Sorry, but no one thinks our tax policy should incentivize lifestyles like yours. God damn. Now, a bunch of other conservative influencers responded, including Ashley St. Clair, Lauren Chen, uh, Louis C.K., randomly, comedian, uh, the Hodge Twins, and Bethany Mandel. But Joel Berry's reply seemed to really get under Portnoy's skin, which led to this response from him where he says, Weird. Your boss fucking loves me, specifically how I deal with clown shows like you. And then he shared a screenshot of a text that Seth Dillon sent him where he says he's a big fan of Portnoy. Damn. So in conclusion, these examples demonstrate how the Harris campaign has sent Republicans into a total state of disarray. I mean, you've got House GOP leadership telling Republicans to stop with the racist and sexist attacks against her. You have GOP pundits getting into ugly public debates about strategy on Twitter. And I've got to say, all of this infighting on the right is uh, really nice to see, because even though there was a little bit of bickering during the primary you know, the Republican primary specifically, it did seem like most Republicans had coalesced around Donald Trump in an effort to beat Biden. But now that Biden's out, you know, all bets are off and it's an entirely new race. And Harris's sudden surge in the polls is forcing them to kind of change things up, but they don't know what to do. So they're panicking and they're attacking each other and lashing out at each other. And I've got to say, you love to see it. So let them fight. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? tree, tree, tree. Tree. <laughs> Tree. They not like us. Tree. Tree. You think you just fell out of a coconut? Tree.